Seoul's top diplomat is in Vancouver for high-level international discussions on the situation with North Korea. But with China and Russia not invited to the talks, questions over the meeting's credibility are already being raised. Guan Zhang reports. The inaugural Vancouver Foreign Ministers' Meeting on Security and Stability on the Korean Peninsula will open on Tuesday. Co-hosted by the U.S. and Canada, the meeting aims to boost the global effort to find a peaceful resolution to the North Korea nuclear situation. Those invited are being called the Vancouver Group and will include most countries that fought in the Korean War under the UN flag, such as the UK, France and Turkey, as well as South Korea, and other interested parties like India, Japan and Sweden. However, notable absentees include China, Russia and North Korea. It's unclear whether they were formally invited or not, but their absence has caused some to question the effectiveness and purpose of the meeting. Beijing has criticized it, saying that without all the major relevant parties involved, the meeting won't help the situation on the Korean Peninsula and only divide the international community even further. Despite an easing of tensions, with the two Koreas now talking again, the main outcome of the summit is expected to be an agreement to keep the pressure on Pyongyang, with the next step being a focus on trying to stop ships carrying out illicit trade with the regime at sea. The main point of this Vancouver meeting is to confirm the solidarity among these countries that um, the maximum pressure on North Korea in the form of the uh, unilateral and the multilateral economic sanction uh, must remain as a top priority. China and Russia may uh, jump on the ship if they uh, find that international solidarity is the uh, inevitable uh, trend and uh, it serves as strategic interest to uh, be on board. A trilateral meeting on the sidelines with South Korea, the U.S. and Japan has been talked about, as has a separate South Korea-U.S. meeting where the ongoing inter-Korean talks would likely be the main point of discussion. Then there's a potentially frosty meeting between the foreign ministers of Seoul and Tokyo on the table as well. South Korea and Japan relations have soured again in recent weeks after the Moon administration condemned the controversial 2015 Seoul-Tokyo agreement on the issue of Japan's wartime sexual enslavement of Korean women. It's not clear what progress could be made from this meeting, but it promises to be a highly charged affair. Kwon Jang-woo, Arirang News.